Hey, Carol, how are you? I'm fine, Alan. Well, I want to welcome you to Champions in the Crisis. Um, thank you for coming on. Uh, I was sharing with someone earlier that we were talking with that you were probably one of the very first people connected to St. John's that wasn't a staff member or board member that I had the pleasure of meeting when I came to St. John's two and a half years ago. So um, that was pretty cool. And, and you maintained um, being very involved with St. John's Community Services for quite some time now. Well, it's very, very important, very important to our family. St. John's supports our son, Alex, and they've been supporting him since 2007. Wow, that's a long time, so 13 years. If you would, um, explain how you came about hearing about, about St. John's Community Services and how we got connected to Alex. Like, what was the process that you went through? Well, he was finishing his schooling. He was aging out, um, and... Um, I knew the next step would be adult services. Um, he was in a school program that had him well prepared for supported employment. And um, I really did my research. I figured out as a District of Columbia resident that there were 12 programs at that time in the city that had supported employment options. So I interviewed all 12. Wow, oh my gosh. And um, many of them had, well, we do office work and we teach them to fold envelopes or we do flower arranging. Many of them had specific jobs that they wanted to kind of pigeonhole you into the jobs that they were ready to train for. And we knew that that would be a total disaster for Alex. <laughs> um, Alex adores horses. Um, he loves caring and nurturing for them as much as he has loved therapeutic riding. And one of my questions for each of the, the places I was interviewing, would you consider helping us find a job for Alex in a stables? And St. John said, we think that's a really good idea. <laughs> that sounds great. And, so, and so how long has he been, because he is working at stables in the district. Yes, he is. And he's been there for a little while now, correct? Been there since November of 2007. Well, that's incredible. And he was also one of the first people that we support that I had the pleasure of meeting. I actually went out to the stables. He took me on a tour. He introduced me to a number of the horses and other, other team members there. And he just absolutely enjoys it and loves it immensely, doesn't he? He loves it immensely. He sees the horses as his friend. I think animals also have a sense of, you know, when they find somebody that can communicate with them and they seem to know that Alex is that person. Um, he, he, he's trying to teach the horses manners. Um, if they kick their stalls, no treats for you today. Right. And, um, but yet he's got, he, he understands they need care and they need nurture. And he does that for sure. I remember him kind of explaining the different personalities of the different horses to yeah. me, whether they were having a good day or a bad day that day, which is incredible. Yeah. And then Alex is also quite a musician or an aspiring musician, isn't he? Well, he loves to sing and he plays the guitar. Um, I am, um, my passion is music. So, you know, when your child takes on your passion, it makes you really happy. Um, he's been working with a music therapist probably for 20 years. Wow. And he loves to sing. He's got a nice singing voice. Um, he loves rock and roll. He loves the Beatles. Um, and she, she understands how to teach him and meet him at his level. He thinks he's Eric Clapton. Um, <laughs> when we listen to him, we know he understands how to get around on the guitar, but Eric does it differently. He's got great taste, for sure. And um, it, it brings him a lot of joy. Um, now, he also has taught or helped some people learn music as well, and he helped one of our staff members, if I remember correctly. Yes, there's a very special relationship with one of the staff members. Um, if you feel like the name should be mentioned, I will let you do that. Um, and she learned my background. She was, she was in a supervisory role for Alex and she learned my background. And I learned that she was very interested in music and, and considering pursuing a master's degree in music therapy. 
So we talked and I knew she had an interview coming up and I knew she was very comfortable as a singer. I knew she could get around quite well on the keyboard, but her interview and her aud audition into the program said, you have to be able to accompany yourself on the guitar. And she'd never played guitar a day in her life. And she went to Alex and she asked Alex if he would teach her a song to sing and play on the guitar. And so, um, that happened. Yeah, that's, that a, happened. that's awesome. It's, and I think it's just yet, yet another of a million examples of how um, talented the people that we support in the district are and, and how when encouraged to be integrated and part of the community, they have so much to offer that often I think people um, don't assume that way or, or may overlook them. And I think Alex's talent and how he's been willing to share it with others is a great example of that, isn't it? Well, two things that I would, or two, two times a year, he takes his guitar to the stables to serenade the horses as a treat. Oh. And he sings them patriotic songs on the 4th of July. And he sings them Christmas songs at Christmas time. That's, that's awesome. So now, Carol, when I think of you, one of the words that comes to my mind is advocate. Because you have been a tremendous advocate uh, for, for your son, Alex, for St. John's. Is that just part of your nature? Is that something you've learned and developed over time? Like where, where is that rooted? Wow. Um, I do think it's part of my nature. Um, my whole career was as a teacher. Okay. Teachers are ter ter for sure advocates for their students. Absolutely. And I was in the classroom for 30 years. Wow, excellent. And, um, you know, I was really working hard for the kids, but I always said, but the kid that, that for whom it's the most important is Alex. Sure. So, you know, through his childhood, um, I just made sure I learned the school programs, that I was a voice, that I found out from who was working with him, his strengths, his challenges, and, uh, just kind of put it all to work as to what can I do? How can I put my time into this to make it better for yeah. Alex and for others? And we're certainly seeing that now. We're seeing teachers, you know, have to give a shout out to teachers right now who are doing amazing things, very creative things to try to stay engaged and keep their, their students engaged, you know, because it's a really weird time for students right now. And, and but teachers are, kind of taking it to a whole nother level in terms of how they're creating lesson plans and, and being innovative and, and unique and connecting with their students. Um, so that's, that's really, really key. Now, Carol, like your advocacy though, at some point in time, it, you went from uh, being an advocate for Alex and a family member of a person that we support here in the district to you started financially supporting, you and your husband Rich started financially supporting St. John's and advocating on our behalf that way. What caused that uh, shift? Hmm. Well, I'm not even sure it was a shift. It just seemed like a natural thing to do. Um, St. John's is Alex's lifeline. Mm. And um, we can support them. Um, and we want Alex's life to be um, just the, the, the best it can be for who he is. And if we can help you know, giving our time, giving our experience with him, giving money if we have it, we're going to do it. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. You've been incredibly generous over the years and, and you've really come to the rescue in the last month as we've been launching this campaign um, where we're trying to raise $75,000 and we have a two to one match that's being offered by the Founders Board. Um, who you've been affiliated with at various times, you certainly um, over the course of your tenure with St. John's. Um, how, how important from your perspective is it to keep the work going for St. John's Community Services? And what would, how would you encourage or why would you encourage other people to get involved in this um, campaign that's happening right now? Um, the, just, just the campaign or long term? Uh, both. Uh, certainly the campaign right now, but long term, sure. 
Well, if the campaign now, I know that with everything that our, our world is going through, it's been a real financial hardship for, for so many reasons that organizations like St. John's have no control over, and yet they're trying to do what they can to keep the organization as solvent as can happen and as it can be, and um, they need more money to do it right now because I know in the case of St. John's, some of the funding they receive through the different um, jurisdictions uh, that uh, they are providing services for have cut their funding because the programs have had to be cut at yeah. least temporarily. Yeah. So it's, it's the correct time to step up to the plate and help a little bit more. No, I appreciate that so much. I mean, yeah, our services were suspended on a few different service lines. And yet at the same time, and so we saw a major reduction in, in revenue um, coming through by about 25% or so. And then at the same time, because of the increased needs that the individuals we support have, and often um, them being more kind of medically acute or at higher risk, we had the, you know, we saw our expenses go up dramatically with increased PPE needs as well as overtime uh, for staff because we wanted to limit how many staff were coming in and out of the home because the staff could be the source of transmission. And that meant they're working longer shifts and there's more overtime involved. And our staff have been remarkable uh, just here in the district with the residential programs that are in place right now, they all sheltered in place. And we had staff volunteer um, to you know, essentially be away from their loved ones for a period of time in order to be able to serve and support um, those that they care about so much here that are so vulnerable. So, um, so yeah, I, definitely the need is there. And I, I definitely appreciate all that people are doing uh, to give often sacrificially to St. John's. Um, we've raised so far about $23,000 and this match is enforced through June 5th. So with a two to one matching opportunity, um, certainly I would ask people to consider going online to um, sjcs.org forward slash donate, and you can maximize your gift and be able to essentially triple your gift with this two to one match. And um, know that it's going to help people that are at some of the highest risk um, in the District of Columbia, but also throughout all of the jurisdictions that that we serve. And when you do go online, because I know people like to be able to focus their support um, in various places, you have that option um, with the drop down tab. So you can, uh, you can put the money to work where your donation, where you want your donation to be supportive at St. John's. Um, Carol, how are you and Rich and how are Alex, how are you guys doing and coping with kind of the new normal that we find ourselves in right now? Well, um we're in very good contact with Alex. <laughs> Alex loves to talk on the phone. So um, we speak to him anywhere from three to eight times a day on the telephone. Wow. <laughs> um, we have been delivering every couple of days um, a little something of a treat to the building where he lives in at the main desk. Oh, cool. We basically let him know, uh, you know, he was out of bananas. He loves bananas. We took over bananas. Yeah, awesome. um, and, uh, you know, we let him know we're, we're stopping by, you know, um, either meet us at the back door or it'll be at the front desk. Yeah. So we, we are doing that. Um, we, we, we are missing him. Um, we like to spend um, a full day on a, the weekend every week with him at, you know, at the house doing activities with him. Um, but um, that that's going to happen. We right. know that's going to happen. Um, as far as Rich and I separate from Alex, we're walking probably twice as much as we used to. That's great. And um, I am a pianist and I have loved it for my whole life. And I'm probably spending more time at my piano. A couple of things there, because you mentioned that um, you were actually, you've been playing your entire lifetime, but even now you are still um, doing some lessons and you just started doing that three weeks ago online, which, which has got to be a really unique kind of thing to be able to learn further how to play, but to be able to do it online. Um, what is that like? You know, how do you, how do you do that? Well, um, I attend once a year a pretty intensive piano program, and I've done this for many years. 
and I met um, a, a pianist and a, and a music educator, oh, over, over a dozen years ago, who I really, really had respect with. He happens to be on the faculty at Bowdoin College in Brunswick, Maine. And I have said over and over again, I would love to study with him on a regular basis. How do I do that in Washington, DC when he's in Brunswick? Right. And then with all this that has happened, I knew that his, his employer, Bowdoin College, set him up tremendously so that he could deliver services to the students for them. And I contacted him, said, do you, would you consider working with me? And he said, I said, special project, let's, let's see how this goes. And we, we defined what the project was and here we are. That's um, incredible. That's, a, you know, the reason I find, one of the reasons I find that so interesting, well, for two reasons. One is that after playing um, your entire lifetime, you are still thirsty to learn and, and try to get better. And I, I mentioned that I'm trying to learn different things during this time as well, you know, because it keeps us fresh and it's an opportunity to try to come out of this whole experience better than maybe when we first entered it, right? And so I love the continual learning piece that you're modeling. And then also your use of technology, because at St. John's, we try and we're trying to use technology in a, and we do use technology in a variety of ways to support people remotely, um, to help give them a higher level of independence um, and, and be able to like have more self-determination in their day-to-day -day life. So, and also we've used it during the pandemic, you know, pretty aggressively to support family members like yourself that may be um, elsewhere and they have loved ones that are with us um, that we're supporting. Um, and it, it's a way that they can connect with their loved ones who we're supporting. So um, we're really trying to take our game to a whole nother level when it comes to the use of technology mm -hmm. and be able to really use it to support people at the maximum uh, for them so they can have a, a great quality of life, but a lot of independence, you know, as much independence as possible. And, um, you know, we'll be doing a future episode of Champions in the Crisis where we actually highlight some of the ways that we use some of the specific ways that we use technology and smart home technology um, to give people that level of independence and community connection, because that's really important. So, um, well, in the walking thing, I'm right there with you. I think my wife and I walked more this past weekend than we've done in quite some time. Um, I think we got a good few miles in each day. It's, it was such nice weather, you know, here in the DMV area for sure. So, um, Carol, I want to thank you, but any final comments or encouragement that you would have for people watching us today and listening to your words for advocacy and, and supporting St. John's Community Services? Just so many of this, the staff at St. John's goes over and above the call of duty for Alex. And if I can mention one thing about the technology thing. Yeah. Alex has been working uh, with a music therapist for many years, and that's a once a week meeting, go to this place and you know have his session well that's not happening and she has volunteered to uh do this online and alex did not have the the um, it ability to just be able to do this but it was the it department at st john's that worked with the um, residential staff that supports him to get him up on an ipad so he can have his sessions with his music therapist and sing and play with her. Yeah, I appreciate that shout out. That was probably Carl, and uh, he's referred I to it. Yeah, and, it and again, we're really trying to uh, push his time and other people's resources and time to supporting people and giving them access to tools because that's a perfect example. You know, so it that's something Alex was loving to do prior to the pandemic. Well, why should it stop during the pandemic if we can figure out a way to remotely do it? And, and so again, when you would consider part of our mission as an organization, our purpose as an organization is to help people live their best life. You know, I'm glad to hear that, that that's happening and that even in the midst of kind of this chaos and the new normal that we're kind of finding ourselves in, Alex is still finding a way to have a higher quality of life because of it. So no, I appreciate that so much. And I want to thank you and, and your husband and just your support of St. John's, your advocacy for your son, your advocacy for St. John's as an organization is just, um, just unparalleled and so grateful for your history with us and just your, 
your faith and trust in the work in, in our staff. It means the world to us. And just thank you for joining uh, Champions in, our, in the Crisis today. And um, Carol was our first live person uh, to do this. And so I think it went all right, but I appreciate your willingness to kind of, someone's gotta be first through the wall and you're willing to go there with me today. So thank you for doing that. You're so welcome, Alan, my pleasure. Well, we thank you all for tuning in on Facebook Live today and on Zoom and uh, look forward to uh, more connection with you. I hope that you've been dropping some comments in, in the chat there. Please know that that, again, our two to one match, um, thanks to the Founders Board, is going through June 5th. And so for every $10 you give that really is tripled to 30, $50 becomes 150, $100 becomes 300. And we do need your help more than ever to be able to support people like Alex that just need that extra support to be able to live their best life. And so um, we wanna be able to support our frontline workers to the best of our ability to make sure they have enough PPE, that um, they're able to do their job necessary in supporting individuals that we serve often with such high medical needs and are at great risk of this virus and other, other medical issues. So um, I thank you so much for tuning in. I thank you for your support. And again, you can go to our website, sjcs.org forward slash donate. Thank you. Um, stay healthy and be well.